Hey guys, Mr. Klein here, and we're continuing our lesson on our chapter regarding Greek history by talking about Athens and Sparta, the two main city-states in Greek history. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, a lot of this information that we get comes from this guy. Thucydides. Thucydides was, along with Herodotus, which we talked about in the last lesson, kind of the first major historian. Thucydides is kind of considered the father of history because he wrote in a very unbiased, factual style in that he took primary sources and just wrote about what happened and didn't make uh, too many judgment calls, if you will. And he produced the first major book, uh, historical book in history, we call the, Pe uh, the Peloponnesian War, which we'll talk about later on. Now, we have two major city-states we need to look at. Uh, the first one was Sparta. Sparta, yes, from This is Sparta and 300 fame, is down here in southern Greece. And Sparta is actually no more. Uh, all that's really left is these ruins of the ancient Spartan theater here, uh, on here, uh, and the modern city of Sparti, which is right here, which is about 35, 40,000 people that live here. Um, and Sparta was the most, the biggest and most powerful city-state here in southern Greece, whereas Athens was the most powerful city-state of them all. And as you can see, history's kind of been a bit more kind to Athens than it is to Sparta. Athens has several million people, the capital of Greece known throughout history. Sparta is just a bunch of ruins left in a town that's mainly known for processing olive, uh, olives for production and export. So let's look at the two societies and how they were different and in order to get an understanding of Greek society. Now, Spartan life was dominated by the army. Uh, the uh, Spartans pretty much, everything revolved around the army. Uh, and here's a picture of a Spartan soldier killing a Persian soldier from Greek pottery. And the army was centerpiece and the strength of Sparta depended on its army. Now, Sparta was really hardcore. Uh, when babies were born, if they were unhealthy, they were taken outside the city and left to die because they figured that these children would not make productive citizens. Boys from an early age ran, jumped, swam, and threw javelins in order to increase their strength. And the whole idea was to build a stronger and better man uh, in order to serve in the army. And male citizens between the ages of 20 and 30 could get married, but they had to spend their time in army barracks, just like soldiers today, now maneuvers and stuff, they lived together as soldiers and only occasionally visited their families, even if they were married. And if Sparta went to war, these soldiers would go and would fight. And uh, so the bulk of Spartan society of the citizens, like the landowners and the more wealthy people, was dedicated for working in the army. Now, women in Sparta did have more rights than other Greek women. Uh, for example, women actually owned had ownership of much of the land in Sparta and ran their households. Uh, the reason was the men were always out fighting or training for war, so as a result the women were left home in order to preserve, uh, preserve the city and keep the whole city moving in order to support the army. The bulk of Sparta's population were actually slaves. Slaves grew crops, uh, they were bound to the land owned by Spartan landowners, and generally didn't rebel because they feared the army. Their movement was extremely limited. A very small number of Spartan citizens had freedom to even leave the city without permission. And every once in a while, the helots, which is what the slaves were called, would revolt, and the Spartan army would go in and crush them and kill them. Sparta, Sparta had a different government than what we remember about Athens. Sparta had an oligarchy, which was based on two kings uh, who were generally elected, who led the army themselves, but allowed elected officials to run the daily activities. Much like in Athens, they had citizens who were selected in order to run the day-to-day -day activities and run the government. Sparta had elected officials to run the government while the army was led by the two kings which are usually elected. And these elected officials also led dealings between Sparta and other city-states in Athens and, for example, the Persian Empire and things like that. 
So Sparta was built all around the military. Uh, the entire city was geared toward combat. Uh, and it grew because of its military prowess. Usually at most, you would anywhere have anywhere between eight to 12,000 soldiers made up the Spartan army because the city probably only had at its height about 40,000 people apart, uh, including slaves and merchants. So it was really small, but had a very formidable uh, reputation, mainly through Thermopylae and other battles. Contrasting this were the Athenians. The Athens had a powerful military, and it had an even better navy, considered to be the greatest in the ancient world uh, until the Romans came along. But not just the powerful military and a valued physical training and strong bodies, the Athenians prized education, education rather, clear thinking, and the arts. And Athenians, of course, created the Greek dramas, the Greek comedies, tragedies, theater, writing, poetry, painting, pottery, all of that stuff mainly came from the Athenian city-states, or at least what we think of as Greek or ancient civilizations. Many Athenians had physical training, but also learned to read, write, or even play musical instruments. It was considered to be that whole body of thing that Pericles kind of talked about, how being a good citizen was more, uh, was defending Athens just as well as being a member of the army. Athenians wanted the whole person to be powerful, not just the body, but also the mind. For the wealthy in Athens, they had their sons learn from private tutors who taught them philosophy, which is thinking about big ideas, geometry, astronomy, and even public speaking. And many of the great thinkers we think of in Greek history were these tutors. The first of which was Socrates, and in this famous painting of the death of Socrates, Socrates was a famous philosopher, and he was famous for challenging the thinking of the day, and he was eventually put on trial later on in the chapter, and was sentenced to death for constantly undermining what they considered to be the Athenian democracy. And this is a famous painting of him committing suicide according to the court order. And one of Socrates' students was Plato, which is this guy right here, whose student right here was Aristotle, who had another famous student named Alexander we'll talk about in the next one. He was kind of great. Spoiler alert. But these thinkers came up with a lot of the scientific and philosophical underpinnings of Western civilization that we have today. And these guys... Uh, gave all this philosophy and thinking and ideas about the universe and astronomy and stuff to the wealthy of Athens, which led them to be more educated probably than any other time in history up until then for a group of the population. However, the bulk of Athens' population was still poor, didn't own property, and didn't really have a lot of a political power. Because if you remember, the Athenian citizenship uh, participating in the assembly was only about 12% of the total population. Now, poor boys generally received very little education beyond learning how to do their job, and girls received no education at all. Now, and remember, despite the Athenian democratic system, Athens had very little rights for women. They can participate and st uh, in government and things like that. So we, on one hand, we had the Athenians thinking about education and the arts and building a whole human uh, who served their city in democracy and the army, but also being well-read with the arts and stuff, whereas the Spartans were concentrated on them building an army and fighting and surviving uh, in order to build the civilization. These two worked together along with other like Thebes and Corinth and Thessaloniki uh, throughout the Persian Wars. But after the Persian Wars, the many Greek states joined what we called alliances uh, to help defend each other and protect trade. Because what happened was even at the end of the Persian Wars, if we zoom out from Sparta, and we look at this area, the Persians still controlled all of Turkey apart from this area along the Aegean Sea. Uh, as a result, this huge Persian army was sitting there waiting to attack, and so the Greeks decided to band together, and they couldn't just be independent city-states, but had to stand together to be able to fight and defeat the Persians if they had to. The most powerful city-state at the end of the Persian Wars was the Athenians. Athens had a large and powerful navy, which if you remember at Salamis, crushed the Persian fleet. Because of the Athenian navy, the Persian army would have had to cross over, which they did earlier in the Persian Wars over here, rather than just jumping straight across. 
and as a result the Athenian navy was able to keep all of Greece safe in that matter. Now, Athens began to treat other city-states like its subjects and tell them what to do, and Sparta got tired of it, and they formed a league of their own and ended up declaring war on Athens. And this led to the Peloponnesian War. And so this kind of looks at what we talk about. Uh, the strategy of Athens was to, in the Peloponnesian War, where it broke, broke out, was defend on the land, attack throughout the sea, and then continue trade because all the city-states were out here on, the, uh, on these islands and stuff. And this area in orange was what we called the Delian League, which were Greek city-states and lands allied with Athens. And then the Peloponnesian League was centered on Sparta. This is what we call the Peloponnesian Peninsula, um, right here and here. And we had these groups of city-states who were allied with Sparta. And like I said, these two squared off in the Peloponnesian War, which was between city-states, like I said, led by Athens and Sparta. And this went on through three stages of wars for 30 years. And in the end, it ended up being the undoing of Greece and the end of the Greek Golden Age. At the beginning, through the leadership of that guy Pericles, if you remember from the last lesson, Athens won at first. However, plague swept through the city, he died, uh, and Athenian leadership wasn't able to lead off by Pericles' example, and Sparta took the upper hand, and by 404 BC, the Athenians surrendered. And one of the first things Sparta did was they got rid of the Athenian democracy. And they ruled for about 30 years until Athens and other city-states fought against them and revolted. And the series of wars, which was like a total war where they fought both sides fiercely, uh, ravaging cities and stuff, ended up weakening the Greek civilization uh, and the Greek city-states, leaving it open to attack from the outside. Uh, not from the Persians, but from people north of Greece. Now, before we get finish up this lesson, this is a picture of a Greek hoplite uh, or an infantryman, which if you were always wondering what a Greek soldier looked like, this is what we were talking about. When we think of a Spartan or a soldier from the Greek times, a hoplite had a long spear. We call it a javelin. He had a large round shield, and he had a sword. Uh, that was rather short. His helmet covered most of his face and his head, and he wore a breastplate which protected his chest. The Persians didn't have any sort of armor like this, which we talked about in the Persian Wars in the last lesson, and this made Greek soldiers much tougher to kill than the Persians uh, were, which led to the victory. So both sides were kind of set up like this. Okay, so let's wrap up today's lesson. Um, you had two major city-states. You had Sparta, right here. Sparta was all about the army. Boys serving in the army grew up learning how to be soldiers. They spent ages 20 to 30 living in army barracks. In fact, they even served in the reserve until age 60. Women in Sparta had uh, more rights than other places, but they had few overall. And Spart Sparta was ruled by two kings who led the army, but elected officials took care of day-to-day -day affairs. Athens, on the other hand, valued the whole person. They appreciated the military, but wanted people to read, think, write, play instruments, and things like that, which led to philosophers such as Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. And these two city-states ended up fighting in the Peloponnesian War between Athens and Sparta. Athens was winning at first, but when Pericles passed away due to plague, the Spartans took advantage and ended up defeating Athens and their allies. But after 30 years of rule, the uh, Athenian city-states all rebelled against the Spartans and left Greece weak in order to be taken over by invaders from the outside, which we'll talk about in the next lesson. So there you go. That's the lesson. If you have any questions, please let me know. And thanks for watching.